Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith, and we're in here at my Rutland lathe. Now, the Rutland lathe was made in Taiwan, and uh, this actual model make lathe itself was made in 1988. All right, now this came in a couple years back, year and a half, a couple years back, and you saw it get offloaded. That's the time period where I gave away the Sheldon and then brought that in and it's been sitting in the shop here a long time. Well, in the last um, month, month and a half or so, I actually started cleaning out, um, shortly after coming back from the bash there, I started cleaning out my shop. Uh, just something triggered it. Um, I think it's been kind of long time coming. Uh, I've been whittling on both the machine shop area and the plasma cam area and I decided to start working on this middle section and start getting some of the things that I'm going to be looking forward and enjoying running up and running and working space around them. All right, then I got rid of the small south bend that was in here as well. And I chose this over the south bend because this doesn't need a complete major makeover and I didn't have it in my heart to uh, uh, go through it on the south bend. And this actually will let me do that metric thread that I need to do once a year. Um, all right, so what are we doing in here? Well, we're getting ready to check out what's under this old girl's apron. Now, what is a Lay's apron? The apron is this section here that hangs down from the carriage. Uh, it hangs from the carriage itself. The carriage is the section on your lathe that rides back and forth on your ways of the bed in line with the spindle axis. This section here is the cross slide. The cross slide is the part that moves across your carriage and then your compound is named that because it does all the compound directions of travel on top of the cross slide. All right, so why are we why are we getting into this well I talked to the guys over at Shooting Star Technology and I want to put a two axis digital readout on this machine and uh, so we were working out uh, uh, a situation where I can get that readout on this machine and before I put that that readout on this machine I want to go ahead and take care of the play that I have in the cross slide and the nut. It's real free and loose there, but you crank it back at this end here and it's extremely tight. Um, I've already procured the, the tap, which is a um, 5 8 8 left hand. You can always tell you have a left hand without even seeing the screw. If you're turning clockwise on your, on your crank and it's going out, um, away from you it is a left hand thread also um, if it is one eighth uh, inch in one revolution you automatically know that you have an eight thread um, okay so I got the tap so that I can make the two nuts now we're going to be taking it apart so that I can measure the cross uh, lead screw now the cross lead screw in fact I, what it one of the first things I did is I don't have an actual breakdown manual of this, but uh, uh, R Rutland made in Taiwan was um, bought out or uh, copied in China, Republic of China, um, and I believe they called it the INCO. Um, they, and they do have a manual uh, online and I was able to uh, download it and there are a few different things that China uh, did to this Taiwanese great machine here and uh, we'll, we'll stumble into some of those probably along the way so anyway I got the book here so that we can we can get a visual idea of it <clears throat> the reason why I want to go all the way down to the apron is that, like I said again I'm gonna be putting a readout on here and I just want to go ahead and make sure that everything on this is gonna be relatively long lasting I just I'm going to take a quick look in there and so we're going to just make a quick piece of getting this drop down clean inspect if something major does come up about we will take care of that while we're getting it in um, uh, or back together 
while this is off, I, I'm not sure how that hardware stuff is going to be mounting on there, but if I need to drill tap or anything else in into either the carriage or the cross slide, I'll have those items off and I can go do that in the other shop. And that will make an easy part instead of trying to pistol drill and, and, um, and, and mount everything up right here at the lathe. All right. So, um, and the urgency of the, the readout is because I actually have, I have a project already for my buddy Nathan, we talked about it earlier, but I have a, um, a shaft that's going to go in a replica of a, a steam tractor uh, that he's got going on, and that's going to be my first job in here, and the readout's going to let me, uh, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine or so different diameters and raised uh, flanges on a shaft with different diameters in between all of those. So it is going to be something that would be a lot easier with the readout and, and that's kind of, we're going bam, bam, bam. It's been a long road. Uh, Nathan and I have been talking about this for, I don't know, probably five months, six months right now. So um, we're, we're just trying to make it all happen. Okay. We're going to go ahead and we're going to start at the top here and we're going to pull off our tool post here and we're going to be setting all of our items over on the cabinet by our shaper here. Now the compound is fairly tight. I am, I'm only getting, I'm only getting about 10 thousandths uh, playing and that's in the screw. Well, we can take this apart and clean this at another time uh, or clean it before we put it back on here but I don't think we're actually going to do anything to it as far as um, lead screw or lead nut maybe a little bit of gib uh, adjustment and uh, I think this just pops right off the top there it is all right we'll set that off out of the way the easiest way to take this off of here because there's no nothing stopping here uh, from this going all the way off is, is to go ahead and unscrew it from the lead screw and it'll come all the way out to where it actually leaves the nuts okay it's left the nuts it can still slide all right i'm gonna have to come around to that side to pull it off i believe let me see i'll hold my hand under here i should be able to do it this way here okay i just felt the gib yep gib gib lies on this side here and there's our pair of nuts all right, and I'm just gonna lay this upside down here for a second. And that's what we're gonna be using this tap for, is to go ahead and make a new set of nuts. All right, that's the starting end of the tap, and this is the finishing end of the tap right here. And I'm looking at the uh, at the threads inside and they are pretty thin walled and I even see a little peeling off on that one in there. We will get those out and we'll get some closer shots when we get ready to make those those pair of nuts. So we're going to be machining two blocks like that and then bore those out or drill those out and then run the Acme tap through. So we're going to be remaking those two nuts. Okay, we got the breakdown. We, this is the uh, the manual that we're kind of following along, but not believing everything that we see. Uh, we want to pull this stem out. Well, this stem actually it comes apart after you get the handle, the dial, and all of that off of here. Then you undo the nut for the bearing, and then it goes on out the housing. So you got a pair of thrust bearings and washers like right there, and then everything should go out that way, and the gear slides on. And it has a key in here, um, and there's a there's a little plate in there. See, this is the old the crossfeed nut. It actually shows a solid nut with a little block there, and then uh, then then they spread it um, to create that instead of the uh, the two nuts and and so we're gonna we're gonna be deciphering that later. But right here, the handle actually shows a pin going through the handle to hold that on there. Well. I took some dike, uh, uh, dye penetrant and I sprayed it on here and there absolutely is no, there's, there's no hole or anything else in there. So I need to find out how else we can go ahead and pull this off of here 
is it threaded on there or is it pressed on there or what so this plate in here kind of covers up that gear that you saw in, in that part okay that that gear is a little loose on there there's some play oh that that fits this yeah it was it was loose okay there's no key in that shaft just a dimple all right so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to put that back in there All right, we're going to tighten it up. Okay, that's tight there. All right, I'm going to engage. I'm going to engage my gear so that I'm locking that. Probably could have did this uh, before that carriage was off of there, but I think it still hold it. All right, this does move. Okay, it's not coming off. Let's see, left hand, right hand. No, nope, it's spinning both ways without, so it might be a press fit. So let's just pull as we turn. That's what it is. There's just a press fit on there. A little bit of plastic or whatever. Okay, let's take it out of gear now. Alright, so we got the handle off. Let's pull this all the way out. I got to get a wire brush and see what I'm actually coming up against right here. It looks like threads to me. It's yeah, they are threads. See if maybe I can use okay use that like the spanner wrench okay now that retainer nut there comes off and uh, that's kind of why you like to kind of dimple things or put brass put a brass uh, little slug in there so it doesn't damage your threads like that okay now what do we got we got another one here for the dial I get my oh <laughs> I keep forgetting I put an air nozzle right by each of these machines in here so that I don't have cords dragging all over the floor there we go screw it all the way back in we'll blow that out again there's a, a little bit of thread down in there and then it's a relief hole before I start tugging on something I always make sure that there's not another set screw underneath And it doesn't look like one, but it did put a pretty good dimple in there. All right, little uh, plastic mallet. Let's go. Let's go get our plastic mallet. Okay, my plastic mallet. 
and drop my Allen wrench. <clears throat> Didn't go far. All right. Plastic mallet, I'm just trying to grab that little edge right there and I'm putting my fingers on that side there, kind of pushing in like a gear puller. It's trying to come. All right, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go get a little puller and see if that doesn't help us get this off. All right, I was out in the field one day and I think uh, I stopped by Sears and then I went over to another place there and I found this uh, posi lock. I think it might have been in uh, Napa. I might have found this posi lock here. And uh, what this one does is actually has a collar here that kind of tightens down on uh, on these three three jaws here. And that'll bring that in close, so I don't have I don't I won't miss on that. Uh, this is a pivot block here that I like on the center one here, and it has a dull point in the bottom down in here where it makes contact. Okay, and of course I didn't bring the wrench. I got my three quarter inch wrench now. And it no no problem. This is the right tool. It's pulling it off. I can almost spin this by hand. Alright. Set that out of the way. A good chunk of, of metal there and this is stuck with this normally rides I think that is where I'm probably gonna put a little piece of brass uh, slug or whatever right below that set screw so that that dog point doesn't dig into there you know I, I want to be able to move this easy and adjust it and I don't want to wear a track in my my new shaft that I'm gonna make here Okay, Whoop. love my rubber mats. All right. I'm going to take a file and lightly file, and you can see. Let me zoom you in so you can see. Let me wipe that off so I can see. Okay, right there is the pecker tracks from setting that dial and locking it down. Fear creates marks like that over tightening things and really I, I don't think for something that you want to adjust to move around on a regular basis I don't really think a dog points a good contact for that and or that right there that's where the the locking collar was coming in and, and that was that was locking on there all right now we have this face plate which actually has two bolts going in this way we slide that off of there uh, and then this shaft will be free to to come out uh, we'll have to loosen this gear again and i believe the shaft will slide out this way after we pull this plate up okay Okay, the thrust bearing should be able to come out of here no problem now. And that'll that'll pull off um, as we pull this off. Blue those out so I can get this wrench in here. Okay. Okay, there's the inner race. Here's the bearing pack. And 
our outer race we'll go ahead and we'll stack those on there and it actually has a number there bearing number and here's here's the other side we'll put those in there okay now there's a collar with a a pin going through it so when I get this cleaned up that actually might this whole thing might be 5 eighths diameter and then this collar goes on and is pinned in there um, we'll, we'll take a look at we'll take a look at that and see if we want to make that solid and turn on everything or do we want to go ahead and duplicate what they got which would be easier is to take the 5 eighths diameter a little bit of a a little bit of a burr on the outside of those threads from rolling over in those nuts. You know, I might pop, pop out that ro roll pin and go out that way there just so I don't damage the inside of that gear any more than the clearance it has right now. Let me look for a pin punch. Oh, I have one. Is that 1 16th? No, it's a little bit larger than 1 16th. 5 64ths. A little larger than 5 64ths. 332. That's what it looks like. I think it'll hit the pan. There we go. Okay, does that that pops off? Nice. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and take the file again. Instead of fighting things, remove the burrs as you as you're going sometimes on your projects here. Why that has a groove underneath there where that pin was, I don't I don't understand that. We'll study that a little more. Alright. Alright, there's a cross screw. Alright, we want to drop the apron down off of here and basically that's going to be these four bolts right here and that apron will drop except for it has a, uh, a lead screw, it has a feed screw and it has a um, directional or switch control uh, lever here. Okay, now we're getting down into where we're going to be playing or with the electrical and I do have the um, emergency stop stop but I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna kill the power to this now because I'm gonna be entering the first section of electrical and I don't want to have an accident of engaging or whatever while I'm while I'm doing this so I'm gonna go shut that off okay the powers killed and uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and I just want to crack these loose Okay. Now, this the rods are supported at this end by this guide block or bearing block here, and they're tied in up at the headstock here, up the the uh, feed box, uh, with two roll pins and a collar here, and a roll pin going in for the switch. Now I'm going to pull the cover off of this switch here because I think one it'll let us punch that roll pin out because it can bypass otherwise the shield is in the way and another reason why you want the power off what happens if you touch metal against uh, hot leads there a uh, little guns on there so we'll, we'll probably want to clean that out let me get the two screws here we don't lose anything. There we go. 
see that's round there. So I should be able to take, punch that roll pin out there. We're gonna, I think that might be a set screw. Yes, it is. All right, let's see if that rod is loose. Yep, okay. It looks like that's the easy one. All right, and okay, I see that the, that rod, this lever has two bolts there in the side. And I'm gonna go ahead and I think I'm gonna drop this also separately okay I got it loose I'm gonna let it hang there I'm gonna go ahead and break loose this cap here <clears throat> Okay, that's loose. We can slide that off. Okay. Lay the block down here. And that's what it, we're, we're free on. That feet and the switch can lever here. Okay. One rod is completely out of the way right now. Okay, we notice we're starting to get oil down here in our pan. So I, I look and it's coming out of these holes in the side. So there is probably an oil bath, a uh, certain level in there. And that's, uh, that's also nice to, to know. And we'll be looking at where you can add oil to it. And um, if there is supposed to be a level and, and dropping the apron, is exactly what we're interested in is finding out all about that all right we got two roll pins to knock out here they may be uh, 3 16 roll pins let's see that's what they look like all right let's um there we go we put it in neutral so we can spin it in the right direction here let me just make sure those aren't Allen's also. And they they show a roll pin there. Yeah, it's a roll pin. I just didn't want to hammer into a set screw. All right. Go ahead and knock out the other one here. Okay, and retrieve those two pins right there. They're both the same size. All right, let's lock the uh, there, we locked we lock the uh, thread thread engagement here, and we just pulled that one straight out of there. Okay, and I don't know how to do this one other than pulling on it. Um, trying to get something on here. Uh, Semi hold it. With a rod. I'm trying to hold the rod itself, put my palm against the side of the carriage here. I'm just trying this gingerly right now. To, ah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> All right. 
the rod and the apron are completely free and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab a rag here and we're gonna we're gonna get a two by four or four by four we're gonna get it to where it'll hold the pan up so we can drop this down gingerly and and not not fight it not crash with it and if we can find something tight enough when it goes back together we may be able to grab it with the bolts with some shims under it and get it drawn back up in there okay I've, I've got one block and then I got a piece of three-quarter plywood just just fits right underneath there a regular four by four block slides underneath there. there's a boss underneath here that's actually holding um, holding the bushing on on this rod here that actually could be dropped this this rod could be dropped down um, but I wanted to look at it as a whole um, you know and this rod here probably can come out of here somewhat if uh, the uh, screw here um, screw dial was disconnected as well but we're going to go ahead and pull these four bolts now A lot of crud in around those those will all be cleaned out when we go to put this thing back together now this is just a inspection disassemble an inspection okay this is a short time for all of this to come apart okay now we're just going to hang on to this making sure that okay that's it's all disassembled this thing is actually loose now It does have to come down a little bit because the gear does ride up just a little bit here. So it can't it can't come out past that. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna try to pull this little shim out of here. There we go. Now the gear box and I can look down in there and I can see the oil and I can see the gears and the shift levers and looks pretty neat down in there. Let me turn it around here. Show you the back side here. There you go. Alright, I'm going to set this on a stool. Okay, and the final last two pieces that we got to pull off of here get a neat pad here all right uh, we have two uh, keepers that go the full length of of the bed on on both sides or at least sometimes they have a block here and a block back here um, and these the weight usually keeps your carriage on down and everything else but this this keeps uh, a safety factor in here so your carriage is not going to get lifted up. Alright, and there's your surface that slides on the underside of your ways and holds the tolerances there. We will look at that for wear and decide if we want to take and, and uh, dress up or massage this surface to create a tighter fit here. Okay, I gotta get that. All right, we come around to the back side and you can see uh, we have one block here. It looks like two, two screws and two in that one there. This center section right here is actually a break or a lock. All right, and no more than a thread draw bolt type of application. And this flat foot here rests against the underside of the bed and locks your carriage from traveling back and forth. All right, let's go ahead and we'll break loose these two plates on this side here
and same thing as the other side there we're seeing a little wear we're kind of feeling for a little difference there a little bit I can see it more than I can feel it. All right, let's set these off to the uh, side here. Now we should be able to lift our carriage up. I'm just going to lift this up and I'm going to slide this rag underneath. I'm going to flip it upside down so I'm going to lay these these surfaces here against the top of uh, the uh, the carriage. I mean the uh, the rail itself. And then we can get a good look. Actually, I'm going to set it this way here. That way you can get a good look. Down into here. We get a little bit of junk. Uh, locked down into there behind this wiper right here. And we got some here. I mean, this is, this is, this is the kind of stuff you don't really want to get underneath this area right here. There's your oil passage way right there, and and uh, there's where the oil comes down into this way here, and it's supposed to be open there. We got a little bit of wear at both ends here, and we got a little bit of gunk down at this end down in here. All right, so we're going to be cleaning all of these, and we'll pull these. Uh, these are these are like rubber wipers and we're going to be doing something different like I did on my closing. I want I want wipers that will hold out debris flying and uh, and kind of catching that kind of stuff before it actually gets all the way up and underneath there. <laughs> 